Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here. In today's video, we're going to be talking a bit about the buffs that hit Warlock in, I guess, yesterday at this point, beta build. We have some combat testing, some sims as well, looking at updated Destro, Demo, and Affliction. A lot has changed. Uh, something's going to change again when you see what's going to happen in this video. And uh, yeah, you know, we're going to go from there and look at some of that combat logs and, you know, talk about what might need to change for destruction. Uh, if you guys want any weak words or add-ons in the video, links to Twitch and Discord down below, you can get them for free. Uh, the voting for the M MMO awards over here ends a couple days. If you guys haven't voted for me or really for, me, for anybody in general, you should vote for somebody. Uh, the MMO awards voting is at MMOawards.com. If you want to do that, um, stuttering, that's okay. And uh, yeah, ends a few days, vote for somebody, whether it's me or somebody else, because, you know, a lot of awesome creators are up there. And uh, that is that. Also, the War Within Beta Spreadsheet, mentioned a few times, is indeed live on Patreon for Warlock stuff. If you guys want to access to it, the Tier 3 Fail Guard rank or higher gets it, but it will indeed go public regardless before the expansion launches. And uh, yeah, let's get into it, starting off with Sims and some combat testing for briefly all of them, and then a bit more on Destro. Alrighty, so getting into Sims here, these Sims are run by people in the Lock Discord that are working on APLs, updating them, maintaining them. Once again, I can't write them, they're smarter than me, and I greatly appreciate all the help they put out for me and everybody else as well. I haven't run my own Sims. Um, when things are more solidified with tuning and stuff, I'll probably run my own with my own gear and all that getting close to expansion launch, but for now, this is what we have. These Sims are all post buff uh, when it comes to Affliction, Demonology, and Destro for all hero talents as well. And this is where we're sitting. So the first spec here, Affliction. Uh, I did not tag these. It might be a little confusing in certain spots. One thing you can tell from here is Oblivion is once again not the play when it comes to single target. We've gone back and forth on it being good and bad, then good, now it's bad again. Uh, so no Oblivion, Malediction, Sacrilash, Hate Fury. Hate Fury being better than Bleakheart, which we thought was the case. It is. Uh, looking at the damage breakdown here briefly, pulling this up, you can see Dark Lair. We'll look at it in combat in a minute here as well. Sitting around 5.7% with that, I think, 55% buff that it got. Even uh, having also like Visionary here being 1%, but Dark Lair making up around 7% of your damage overall uh, in a 5 minute sim. Not too bad. Wither 15.7 post bug fixes rapture 17.9 i see these trade back and forth depending on procs rng and all that you know they're sat ua big 9.4 this build is not playing xavius's gambit we'll look at that in a minute here shadow bolt 9.5 black and soul agony all this stuff here so on and so forth uh this is the build it looks like this i am a little curious if it's worth actually playing a point in xavius's gambit maybe over withering bolts or over uh, other points here and there. I want to run some more sims on my own. I'm sure the person that ran them, uh, I believe it's Michael, uh, does a great job with all stuff, but you know, uh, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I, I, I want UA to hit harder, basically. We'll see where it's at. Either way, 10%, roughly give or take, is an upgrade from where it was before. Um, but yeah, this is the build. Not a whole lot really changed much, but Dark Lair gained some value, U UA gained value, and Wither, thankfully, appears to be, you know, basically a wash from where it was before, which is, you know, good. Not get nerfed. Uh, moving on to destruction here. So I get, okay, so AF is sitting at 1.16. We're going to look at Destro next, or sorry, Demo next, and see how much better Demo is simming compared to Affliction. AF is 1.16. Demonology is 1.42 million. Now, there's a similarity between Demonology and Destruction, if you haven't seen yet. Destruction and Demonology are both playing Diabolus. As we know, Diabolus received large buffs recently, uh, and it shows in these sims. Uh, Demonology is about, well, honestly, about 300k ahead of Affliction. It does appear to be that way roughly in game two, depending on what you do. I tested it earlier today. We'll look at it here in a minute in combat. Uh, this build is playing no Grimoire Felguard. Uh, pull it up briefly here. Uh, the breakdown, uh, Imps being 20%, Tyrant being 9, Overlord, Wicked Cleave. This is the pet that got buffed with the huge, this is the Fell Lord that spawns from Diabolus. 8.1%, Hit Lord, 5.1%, uh, Ruination, the big meteor, 2.8%, Mother of Chaos, Big Mommy here at 3.6%. Uh, a couple other things here and there, but uh, Diabolus pets doing a lot of damage now. Overlord probably a bit too strong, but you know. That is that. Uh, the build looks like this. Now, if you want to play Grimoire, go for it. I'll give you all a second to spot the difference here. What are we playing over Grimoire? Imp Gang Boss is being played over Grimoire Felguard. Uh, if you want to play Grimoire, you can. It probably makes first Tyrant and third Tyrant a little better. If you're getting Power Infusion, which we haven't even gotten to yet, it's probably a little better to play Grimoire because big Tyrants line up with BIs. But honestly, it's whatever. This build feels really good. I played it earlier. Um... Grimoire, 
not really clunky or anything, but like it is awkward having that, you know, big, small, big, small window. This is the same every time. Cast a big dog, cast some small dogs, cast some imps, tyrant every minute. It actually felt really good in combat, felt smooth, felt consistent damage wise too. Uh, if you can see it here briefly, like the actual, like just consistent damage output it had, this is the wrong one, it's right here. Um, it's like there are peaks and valleys here because of tyrants, but it, it, it felt consistent outside of the tyrants. And you can see like the first opener burst here, uh, later on here, uh, maybe RNG, higher CD, I'm not really sure. But I mean, it's consistent in its peaks and valleys. If you look at the actual Grimoire one, uh, it, it's similar, but they have this larger burst on pull with Grimoire, uh, a bit larger here for two minute one, a tiny bit higher than I guess RNG here, a bit higher here again with bigger one. So similar, but it just felt good. It felt fluent to play um, the No Grimoire build. But honestly, uh, what, what it comes down to, it's a 2K difference at 1.4 million. Doesn't really matter a whole lot, but like what you want. There's Demo. So to recap, AF 1.16 million, Demo 1.42. Brace yourself. So here we go. Destruction 1.65. Destruction, Reign of Chaos uh, build, Reign of Fire spam is still the best version out there. Uh, we were assuming Chaos, I, I was assuming Chaos Bolt buffs would help you know, alleviate this issue, but unfortunately it didn't really do much. Um, Bolt did need a buff, so there is that. Uh, the difference here, about 104k favoring Reign of Fire build. But when I say Reign of Fire build, I want to show you what I mean. The You are casting Reign of Fire in this build. We're going to look at it more in combat here in a minute. But the thing is, this builds the majority of its damage is Chaos Bolt. And that stems from Demonic Arts, which is this. Or Touch of Rancor basically gives you Demonic Art. Whenever you summon a big demon, a, a big mommy, a pit lord, or an overlord, big mommy is this thing, they basically give you your next shark consuming spell, does 100% more damage, and has less cast time, half half cast time reduction, basically. So your bolts are hitting twice as hard. So with this build, you're casting Reign of Fire as your shard spender with Inferno and all that, unless you get a Diabolic Art effect. If you get this, you're casting a Chaos Bolt. It can be a Shadow Burn, but a Chaos Bolt or a Shadow Burn. Uh, and also, if you get a Ritual of Ruin proc, whenever you get one, that's also a Chaos Bolt. So you have to watch two different buffs while also making sure you cast Shadow Burn on cooldown, but not too much too fast. Maybe have it around for a, a proc here if you need it. Uh, and when you're spamming Rain of Fire over and over and over with Shard Gen coming in, it's actually sort of hard to watch both uh, Diabolic Art and Ritual of Ruin in combat and make sure you time things properly. It's not the end of the world if you cast like a art based Rain of Fire, but it is a pretty big loss. Chaos Bolts hit for about 2 million. Rain of Fire hit, hit for about, I think, 300k, give or take. Uh, it varies a bit. It, it might be more than that actually based on, you know, ticks and multiple ticks. But either way, it's beneficial to cast Chaos Bolts with Diabolic Art or Demonic Art and Ritual of Ruin procs. When all hell's breaking loose, you're casting a million. Rain of fires and everything, th things are flying around and getting procs. You'll see it here, it's tougher than it may seem. Uh, let's look briefly at demonology, briefly affliction, and then more Destro and breakdown. We probably need to change for Destro if we want to uh break up this synergy. All right, I forgot what I said, but spec to me first, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna play affliction first here. This dummy might be an execute at times. If it is, I can't really help it, but either way, it shouldn't make a difference because there, there's enough disparity between the specs where you know. One is better than the other, so on and so forth. We're playing this field right here, we talked about it a minute ago. Uh, we're gonna play Siphon Life here over AC because I hate AC testing on dummies, but uh, this is what we're playing. So, we're gonna open up here, cast a Haunt, Unstable Affliction, Agony, Wither, which should be permanent normally. Two Shadow Bolts for Shadows Embrace stacks, one and two. Singularity, I'm gonna Soul Rot, pop my Dark Lair, I'm going to Ascend with this Trinket and pop Malevolence and start casting Raptures. This Trinket here is, I believe, from a Delve or a World Quest, let's call them perfectly as a perfect Ascendancy Serum. Um, playing it for a while, I don't know if it'll be good or not, but hey, you know, we're playing it now. That's that for those that are wondering. Uh, normal opener, dumping all my Raptures here during this window, catching Wither, catching Haunt, and, you know, just doing damn. Uh, this opener here is not incredibly high damage-wise from what I've seen for aft burst, but like uh, RNG is RNG if you get TC procs in your opener and all that. I'm going to dump one proc here, try and fish for a tier set proc. Didn't get it. It's okay. Going to refresh this agony, catch this U8 at the same time, dump this proc before it expires. Got a tier set proc. That's nice. Very exciting times. Uh, and honestly, it's normal aft stuff. Just filling for the most part. Going to dump a proc here, catch this wither here. It will be permanent in most testing when we're playing AC. Dump that proc again there. Gonna refresh a little early here. Go Agony. Hit my UA. Hit my Wither. Hit my Haunt. And then we have 
Dex up, get a singularity, gonna soul rock, gonna dump this now or I'll lose it. Dump this to make to catch Shadows Embrace, pop my trinkets, all this stuff here. Bang bang, dump the nightfall proc. And dump the rest of my raptures of malevolence and my trinket rolling. Now I it does hurt me a bit that affliction has fallen off a decent bit damage-wise. Uh comparatively to affliction or to, to Destro and Demo. I don't think Affliction is actually bad damage wise. Uh, the one difference here between, you know, AF versus Destro and Demo is Destro and Demo both have Diabolist, which has gotten significant buffs, and we're going to look at that in a minute here. Uh, breakdown wise, Wither, about the same as before. Wither, Rapture, UA about 10%, which is cool to see. It did jump a bit. Uh, Dark Lair sitting here would be a little higher. We had it in about 10 seconds here. Uh, Dark Lair, 4.1. Visionary being 0.8 would be about you know, 1.5. Bit higher if you popped it right there other way volley three black and soul shadow bolt so on and so forth pretty typical overall af breakdown and uh oh, not too bad we're gonna change it up here we're gonna hit up demonology next this is going to be the no grimoire build if you want to play grimoire go for it totally fine the opener the opener changes by just casting a grimoire and casting it every other tyrant that's basically it uh we are playing diabolist here so the demons from diabolist have been buffed significantly. They do a lot of damage, uh, and you'll see that right here. So I'm waiting for Imp to spawn here, and then we're gonna Siphon and get rolling. Give me an Imp. Uh, give me an Imp. There we go, Siphon that bad boy. Uh, Precast a Shadow Bolt, Dog runs in, whatever. Grimoire's in there swinging. Cast Big Dog, Shadow Bolt, Minor Dogs. I'm gonna cast a Shadow Bolt here. I think we got time. Hand, Bolt. I'm gonna Hand, Bolt, he'll strike now. Gonna Hand again. Pop my Tyrant, pop my Ascension Trinket, whatever this is, cast Demonic Strength, and go from there. Uh, these demons hit really hard. Now, there is a bug currently on beta where if you're, like, standing at a weird angle or near a different target, sometimes, uh, he did not do it there, which is great, sometimes they will spawn and hit targets behind you. They were cleaving on these earlier and getting more AOE value, Big Mommy and uh, Tyrant, or, or Hitler were, but they're not doing it here, so this should be pretty accurate overall. The biggest pet, I guess, difference here or whatever is that your Overfiend or Overlord actually just crushes. He does an insane amount of damage uh, whenever he jumps in. It's a two-shot hand. Don't do that. Um, his Wicked Cleave, I've seen crit for 5.7 million. That is an incredible amount of damage uh, and likely won't last. Uh, he was buffed by 820%. Uh, maybe it will. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Well, I do know, though, getting a proc from my ruination, the ruination proc there in the Tyrant setup is very nice. I can get 15 imps of my Tyrant. There we go. Pop my book right here. Uh, and once again, the same size Tyrant essentially as last time. We started at 740 here. See if we can climb to uh, damage-wise because we're not playing Grimmel here. So there's no there's no big Tyrant, small Tyrant sequencing. It's just like, yo, everyone's the same. We started at 740. We're at 850, uh, 860, give or take. Need to cast Dog again here. Also, the buff here, uh, this version of Demo also has the buff Demonic Course from Dogs at 50%, not 35. I've noticed I get a couple more cores back, I feel like, over the course of rotation. It's not like fixing it like I did before, but it does feel a little more fluent and like, okay, there is some extra value there. It could just be me being used to the rotation, but I feel like overall it did help a little bit. Feels all right. And there's that. We'll do one more Tyrant setup here because uh, we have Tyrant coming around. I got one core from Dogs there. I'm gonna cast his Infernal Bolt. Uh, I'm gonna Siphon and begin setup. Big Fire Dog, uh, smaller Dogs, and Bolt. We're gonna get a Pit Lord here after this cast. So we should get two uh, casts in here, a Hand and a Ruination. Bang, bang, throw it down. Tyrant, pop in the Ascension Trinket and Strength thing. There you go, 13 imp Tyrant. Uh, playing Pack the Imp Mother and also getting this sequencing in here. It feels like arguably almost a little easier without Grimoire, having that weird like one shard cost for these larger tyrants, but realistically, you know, about the same thing. But I like how this flows. It feels great. I've been playing it with one hand the whole time pretty much, and uh, yeah, it's good. Breakdown wise, imps are high. They got buffed by 15%. Here's my main pet, Dushock, Charhound, Red Dog, Dreadstalker's Tyrant being 8.6, uh, Wicked Cleave, Overlord. Didn't crit at all. If it had, it would have been for about 4 million there. 
Uh, I see it around 8% usually, 7.5 to 8. Didn't crit at all, which is very low chance of it happening. Uh, Felseeker, 5%. Ruination, the big meteor from the Pit Lord, 3%. Infernal Bolt from uh, Big Mommy, 4.5%. Big Mommy herself here, 4.8. I feel like this is actually fine for the most part for these effects. I do feel like Wicked Cleave is a little high. Um, it's usually around here, around Shadow Bolt damage. It just didn't crit at all. It seems very low here. But um, I feel like these are all fine when it comes to single target. It's a big pit lord. It should do big damage. Big Mommy's in there channeling stuff. Infernal Bolt. Maybe it it feels fine. Uh, honestly, I, I don't think this is a bad breakdown. If Desh or Demon feels fluent, uh, yeah, I, I think it's actually pretty solid. Um, so that's Demo. But you can tell the you know, difference in damage there. Demo, death a little stronger than, you know, what Affliction was doing. We're going to shift gears here and look at Destruction. And I might talk a little more about Destruction here as well. Uh, because if Blizzard wants this version of Destro to stay around with Brand of Fire spam, till, uh, for whatever reason, I doubt they do, but let's say they're like, okay, we can't fix this in time and break the synergy here. Um, we'll fix it in 11.1. I wouldn't even be that surprised because it's not as simple as buffing Chaos Bolt. It needed a buff. It got one, which is great. But there are a million other effects like, uh, I mean... Power Overwhelming, which to be fair, you can just tell and it and play something else. Um, power Overwhelming, more shards being spent spawns more Overfiends. Um, just in general, Diabolus, like cyclical rotation of all that spawns more pets more often. They're, they changed this to being a baseline 14 second uh, ritual on, on Diabolus, not 20 like Demo is. Destro's 14 was changed this week. So you're getting essentially uh, two thirds of duration that Demo has, which means more pets spawning more often which you can spawn faster than demo in the first place because you're spamming around a fire whenever you spawn one you literally get a touch of rancor proc every time whether it's big mommy overlord or pit lord giving you a 100 percent increase to your chaos bolt uh shadow burn or rain of fire which is basically always chaos bolt sometimes shadow burn so you're using rain of fire to essentially dump shards as fast as possible churn out more pets churn out more ruinations churn out more overlords with his cleave churn out more big mommies with their infernal bolts and then use the empowered demonic art to cast a chaos bolt at the same time if you get a ritual proc you want to use this to cast a chaos bolt not a rain of fire so it becomes sort of annoying because you have to watch both this proc as well as this proc as well as watching other a bunch of other buffs here and there watch the ritual duration counting down from diabol from diabolist trying to talk today in general as well with it being a short duration it doesn't seem that complicated but it actually becomes a lot more complicated it has a very high skill ceiling if you try to if you can min max to actual t um we were joking about it earlier being super computer sims and super computer play style because it, it's like very very min maxi so all right so we're gonna open up here i'm gonna cast a soul fire into an infer uh trinket i'm gonna send infernal uh shadow burn conflagrate just you know go from there following impatient we talked about it a minute ago i might scuff it but honestly it's so broken it's only really matter in the first place i'm gonna cast a soul fire going to ascend gonna cast my infernal Gonna shadow burn, gonna conflagrate, gonna throw a rain of fire down. I'm gonna conflagrate again, throw another rain of fire. Why not? Cast a shadow burn. Whether chaos is queued up proc wise, we have a demonic art proc. We're going to cast a chaos bolt into that. There's my bolt. There's another rain of fire. There's a shadow burn something. There's a shadow burn, another rain of fire, another proc cube. Cast a chaos bolt. There's a soul fire proc there. Dump this chaos bolt as well. That's a ritual of room proc. Going to cast Shadow Burn, gonna cast Rain of Fire. Another proc queued up there, gonna cast a Chaos Bolt here. Don't wanna overcap here, gotta be careful. Gonna cast a Rain of Fire, gonna cast a Soul Fire, gonna cast a Rain of Fire, gonna cast a Shadow Burn, gonna cast a Soul Fire. Uh, need to cast this Chaos Bolt, we got a proc queued up here. We did, very exciting. Two Conflict Rates here, because why not? Rain of Chaos, or Rain of Fire, I'm sorry. Infernal Bolt, overcap a little bit, but honestly, who cares? Cast that as a proc. Another proc cast out there too. Gonna cast a Shadow Burn, gonna cast a Conflict Rate, gonna cast a Ruination Meteor. Don't wanna cast a, a regular Chaos Bolt. No one does that ancestor anymore. Gonna cast his soul fire. Gonna cast his rain of fire. Watching my proc here. I think that rain of fire might have been empowered by a demonic art. I really couldn't tell you. It wasn't paying attention. Honestly, it doesn't matter. It's pretty broken regardless. I'm gonna pop my trinket here because hey, that sounds pretty cool. Hit that. Put out a conflagrate. I uh, do that. Dump a rain of fire. Dump a rain of fire. We have a proc from ritual ruin there. We're gonna have a ritual proc from pit lord coming up basically now. We have it. We're gonna cast a chaos bolt. We're gonna cast a shadow burn. Double shadow burn. Soul Fire, Ruination, Conflagrate, one Rain of Fire, gonna have a proc basically now, which we're gonna cast a Chaos Bolt on, I think. Uh, we'll Shadow Burn it, no big deal, who cares, honestly. Cast a Conflagrate, uh, cast a Rain of Fire, I mean, you basically get it. You're watching your rotation for both Demonic Art procs, which happen whenever the Demons spawn right about here. 
Uh, that's a demonic art proc, essentially. Also watching Ritual of Ruin procs, which happen here, or here, every 15 stacks. Watching Immolate Time, watching Soulfire procs, watching Conflict Rate, spending your Shadow Burns a single target, and there's that. This dummy is an execute here. So Shadow Burns hitting harder than it should. It's critting more often. Guaranteed crit, obviously. Max 2.3 million. That's going to be an empowered Shadow Burn. Chaos Bolt, max 2 million. That's going to be an empowered Chaos Bolt. Um, incinerates here. Rain of Fire should be lower, honestly. I think I empower one or two. But look at Ruination. Max hit 3.6 million. You can see a big difference here uh, in the damage breakdown from Diabolus Destro versus Diabolus Demo. Ruination 8.5. This is the big meteor. Um, I believe it. Yeah, I think this is a single target one. I don't believe he even cleaved behind me on these. Wicked Cleave from the Overlord. 2.74 crit hit. I've seen 5.4. Don't know how he did it, but he did. Uh, Soul Fire, 1.4 million. I mean, the build just churns out damage. Um, and like when I'm sitting here actually paying attention and focusing more, not talking through it like an auctioneer. Um, <laughs> big mommy proc, look at that. Um, it's actually like semi-challenging to optimally play around your chaos bolts being cast via ritual of ruin or by demonic art uh, but also making sure to weave in shadow burns and everything else and unfortunately while chaos bolt did need a buff and it's good it got it this week um it did not like we talked about break up the synergy or it did not break up it didn't make rain of fire the worst spender so briefly i want to talk about that and what we maybe can do possibly to uh, alleviate this issue or just deal with it until 11.1 Okay, to save this video from running too long, I'm going to try and skim through sort of quickly. But uh, these sims are sent to me by a sale door from the Lock Discord. We talked about it a bunch on stream today and stuff. Uh, we tried to like sort of dig what could be like tweaked or tuned or removed to maybe make things better for Chaos Vault builds. This is the current sims here. The highest Chaos Vault build is here. Essentially 108,000 DPS behind the Reign of Chaos, Reign of Fire, Inferno build. Once again, to clarify, this build casts Chaos Bolts only unless you're gonna overcap on shards. Basically, there's a couple of Reign of Fires, but basically all Chaos Bolts. This, bolt, this build is the one we just played, casting Bolts with Rituals or, you know, all that. Uh, we talked a bit more about it and uh, one of the topics was what if pyrogenics, which is this right here, was removed from the game. Pyrogenics increases all your damage. It's chaos bolt incinerate immolate conflict rate to targets that have rain of fire active when you, you know, uh, hit them with a fire based ability, whether it's rain of fire or other things, right? Uh, it does affect chaos bolt, shadow burn, all the above. Uh, they were able to run Sims and find the result of what that would be. Uh, the difference here with no pyrogenics, the chaos bolt build, uh, you gain about... The disparity is 108k before it's about a uh 30k difference 78k so the chaos bolt build gains some ground if you just full-on delete turn off pyrogenics which you don't really want to do but i mean like i mean you want to fix the problem but essentially you don't want to play that if it's still around right um so like deleting pyrogenics does indeed lessen the gap between reign of fire and uh well you know Chaos Bolt builds. But the problem is not just Diabolus. You can see the highest Hellcaller Sims here are also playing Rain of Fire. The highest uh, Hellcaller Chaos Bolt build is sitting here, which is essentially 50k DPS behind the best Rain of Fire build. The highest Chaos Bolt build right, being right here. Uh, not as big as Diabolus, but Diabolus cycles once again through all these pets and everything else. So it's not just a Diabolus issue, it's a general Destro issue. Now, if once again you go in here and remove Pyrogenics, Hellcaller build jumps a bit. Uh, Chaos Bolt build is sitting here, pretty close to Reign of Chaos, Reign of Fire build, about 14k difference. So you can lessen that gap a lot by cutting out Pyrogenics completely out of Destro's tree, uh, at least for Hellcaller, right? A bit for, a bit for you know, Diabolus, but not as much, right? Uh, then we said more, what about if Infernal Bolt was changed to give 1.5 shards down from 3? which uh, does change things a little bit. Like if you're comparing this just, just the baseline sim, it's about 108k disparity between these two, which you can see right here, uh, comparatively to, you know, 95k. So a minor change there, but Rain of Fire is still pretty high, trying to lessen shard generation and all that kind of stuff. Um, then we talked about, you know, uh, one and a half shards and no pyrogenics, which, you know, did make things a bit even, a bit more close, which still favors Rain of Fire build, but, you know, Reign of Chaos, Chaos Vault's 60k behind versus 108k. Um, you can see Hellcaller being, you know, relatively close here as well. Uh, then we said, what if we cut Incinerate damage in half and then turn off Pyrogenics as well? Because Incinerate's been buffed a lot. Um, the thing is, when it comes to, like, 
baseline Hellcaller stuff incinerates a much larger portion of your damage because you don't have all these pets running around, you know, Diabolo stuff, all that kind of stuff. Like going to the Hellcaller sim here, if we can pull it up, um, the breakdown, a lot of it is incinerate, 15%. It's been buffed over and over. It's a lot of your damage. Incinerate, Black and Soul, from casting rate of fire, just spending shards and all that, right? Um, so if you come in, and essentially cut incinerate damage in half because you're, you're casting that a lot in between all your rain of fire casts for hellcaller and also make pyrogenics just remove it cut it out of the game completely uh the hellcaller sims actually start to favor chaos bolt rain of fire is here's a 13k loss it favors chaos bolt by cutting out pyrogenics and cutting uh incinerate damage uh in half which is interesting but at the same time you know, well, it, whatever works, works. But the problem is that it doesn't fix the issue for Diabolus. There's about a 64k difference here. Um, ran some more sims here and there. Uh, Sailor did in a bunch. And uh, we came, I mean, he more or less, came, they more or less came to the conclusion that like, you could indeed come in here and remove the actual cast time reduction on Touch of Rancora, which... If that is actually done, if I can find the sim here, I might be able to find that, I don't know. Oh, uh, that will make Chaos Bolt build more valuable. At the same time, if you reset the, if you increase the cycle of Diabolos again from 14 seconds to 20 for Destro, uh, it lessens the gap once again. It's a 109k gap, I'm looking at Discord here, um, to a 70k gap, still favoring Rain of Fire. But you have to, if you factor in multiple changes, you can likely eventually get to a place where you do want to cast Chaos Bolt as Diabolus and Hellcaller in single target. The question, though, is with launch being this close and all of the interactions that might need to change to do this, is it something that Blizzard wants to do? Um, you could come in, like we said, and just straight up say, hey, we're going to cut um, Pyrogenics out of the game. Hey, this is also a great place, a great chance to just put Cataclysm over here. Take Cata, put it there, get rid of Pyrogenics. It's also a problem too, but um, you can do that. Cut Pyra out of the game and cut instant rate damage in half. Uh, buff Chaos Bolt as well. You basically want to buff your spenders and nerf the builders more damage wise um, as well. Like, you know, Pyrogenics being cut, take out of the game. Uh, you can cut instant rate damage in half. And, you know, that would essentially, uh, where's that cement here somewhere? Uh, there's a million of them here, but that would essentially make a uh, Hellcaller, like Chaos Bolt based Hellcaller, the best version where you're not casting rain of fire as hellcaller but the problem with that uh we talked about is basically this, this is some right here is that diabolus is still casting rain of fire in single target here's the highest hellcaller one uh there's rain of fire and here's diabolus so it might come down to something where you have to say you fix hellcaller on its own like once again cut incinerate damage in half i don't know Pyrogenics probably needs to go also just to, you know, make things closer in general. It might be some tweaking and tuning of abilities and also just saying, yo, for Diabolist, um, Reign of Fire counts for like one shard. Just being honest. It's not for each shard spent. It's just, you know, Reign of Fire gives uh, one second reduction regardless and Chaos Bolt gives two. Because if you're playing Inferno, Reign of Fire is two shards. So you're getting two seconds off of each ritual whenever you cast this essentially, right? Based on, you know, this uh, each soul shard spent right if you cut that in half a rain of fire and say yo rains one uh shadow burns one bolt is two that would likely shift a lot more towards playing chaos bolt in single target i don't know if it would like make it better but that in conjunction with maybe cutting incinerate in half and buffing chaos bolt more and, and also cutting pyrogenics from the game and maybe changing this to not give a cast time reduction to you know make chaos bolt more valuable compared to rain of chaos would then possibly put things in a place where maybe you want to cast Chaos Bolt in single target comparatively to Rain of Fire and also making the ritual uh, likely longer again compared to 14 seconds. Because, I mean, these pets are sick and they're awesome. I love seeing them spawn, but they do a lot of damage. And when the ritual is 14 seconds long or 11, if you're playing uh, this and you're casting Rain of Fire so often and spawning them so often and procking uh, this so often, it's a huge cycle of synergy. It's, it's like the Reign of Chaos uh, stuff we had in Shadowlands towards the end, times three. So it's not a simple fix of coming in and just saying, hey, yo, buff Chaos Bolt again. It's not going to matter because this build, you call it the Reign of Fire build. But once again, its biggest source of damage 
If you pull it up here, Diabolus Reign of Chaos build, it's not Reign of Fire. If it'll load. It's not Reign of Fire. Its biggest source of damage is Chaos Bolt. The math has literally been run. You can make Reign of Fire do zero damage. And also cut Pyrogenics from the game completely. No Pyrogenics and Reign of Fire does zero damage. And this build will still beat out Chaos Bolt. So it's not a fundamental buff Chaos Bolt. Probably need to buff Chaos Bolt and reduce Spender's damage and maybe nerf Shard Economy and remove Pyrogenics and make the Ritual longer and a bunch of different things. Which is like, Blizz can do this. And I'm sure they can do it. They're competent. They, they, this is a great version of Locke. Like, memes aside, I like Locke a lot right now. I don't love Rain of Fire and Single Target, but the question is, is it worth doing now with T minus three weeks? Or is it a have fun in 11.0? We'll see you in 11.1 .1 to fix all this. Oh, and just to clarify, you could also hit like uh, incinerate shard gen or like decimation shard gen from Soulfire or whatever. But honestly, uh, once again, it's not just a shard gen thing. It's a lot of things. Hitting shard gen helps a little bit, but it also hurts chaos bolt build a bit as well. Um, it might need a whole on a full, honestly, just big retooling, but uh, we'll see where it goes. The simplest fix is likely just to make this, you know, hey, Rain of Fire is one shard, and maybe that equals out to making Bolt better to cast for Diabolus and for Hellcaller. Uh, just cut incinerate damage in half, probably even across the board for everything is fine, and uh, cut this from the game because it's buffing everything, and with Rain being good in the first place, this is just a free 5% damage and everything, and it's making everything too hard to catch up to, you know, comparison-wise. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and uh, hopefully you guys are having fun playing Warlock on Beta, and uh, any questions you had, hopefully this video answered that. Like I said, I I, I don't know. I, I'm curious if Blizzard is going to just leave Destruction in the state that it's in due to this interaction and the cycle of synergy and all that just not being incredibly easy to fix. I'm sure with certain, with certain parts of it, I didn't even hit on this video because honestly, there are so many moving pieces and unique interactions and stuff with Diabolus and just random fire spam and everything that it does, um, it might end up being a, we'll work on that in 11.1 .1 thing. Maybe you can't spray a fire for a patch and single target and maybe they fix it next week. Who knows? We'll find out. But either way, the about list is cranking and will likely be knocked down as well. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, if you guys want any weak auras on the video or add-ons, whatever, links to Twitch and Discord down below. I'll for free for you guys. Uh, like always, a massive shout out to my patrons. We're in the video as well for all support on Patreon, y'all. Thank y'all a million times, like always. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. If you're looking at supporting on Patreon, should be a link up here as well as down below in the description. Now, we're getting to the point in beta where I think, uh, okay, when it comes to betas, the, the last few weeks of a beta cycle typically ends up being there's not as many raw builds that are pushed. There's more just like tuning that comes in randomly on a Friday night, a Tuesday morning, a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, and I think we might be getting to that point. So I'm curious with these changes to Destro, we talked about maybe being needed this ritual cycle. If it's more of a, these are big changes, we're gonna wait thing, or maybe they'll get it done. I don't know. Maybe they'll find some way to break it. Uh, but if it's up to me, I don't really want to cast Rain of Fire in single target. The rotation is incredibly complex and sort of annoying, but um, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. So all that being said, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.